Servus Männer, it's Red Bull Germany again. Today I want to look one more time, just like I did many times in the last year, I want to look at the official mortality numbers of some European countries and now especially also of Germany. I will be using as always the Euromomo, the European Mortality Monitor database and um, the reason why I didn't do this analysis for Germany in the first wave is quite simple that um, you can see here, you can see my mouse cursor here I think, um, the um, blue states here are the ones that um, are probably not contributing I think and in Germany it is weird but only the state of Hesse and Berlin are contributing. You see them as white areas here in Germany. Uh, it's mostly northern, western and uh, also some yeah, central and eastern European states, southern European states that are contributing. Germany as a whole unfortunately doesn't yet contribute to this database um, but um, now in the second wave, so in winter of 2020 starting, um, it is um, yeah, I hope I can convince you that Hess and Berlin are good representatives of the average situation in Germany. That was not the case in the first wave. Back then it was more Bayern, Baden-Württemberg, North Rhine-Westphalia and so on. But now it is more the most severe cases as we will see later are in the um, yeah, south of um, the eastern part of Germany, so Thüringen and Sachsen and um, almost not affected or very mildly affected is the north of Germany in general. Yeah? Okay, so um, as I said, um, here you see the official numbers of uh, Germany, yeah, the, the state as it is right now. As I said, Thüringen and Sachsen and also, also the east of Bavaria is most affected and the north is yeah, not affected so much. You see this color coded here, the incidence, that means how many new infections from the last seven days per 100,000 inhabitants. And um, yeah, uh, here you see the dark red um, like the Vogtland Kreis here, s over 700, and then in the north, Nordfriesland, for example, you have only 38, so very different. And also in terms of mortality, these are kind of the extremes in Germany, uh, 15 and 81 per 100,000 here. Yeah, and as I said, Hessen and Berlin, somewhere in the middle, uh, you see Berlin here with an incidence of 137 in infections, and 38 roughly in uh, mortalities and Hess is yeah, with this many districts. Some are in the deep red yeah, and some are not so much affected like in this orange uh, color here, somewhere in between. But overall I would say Berlin and Hess are definitely somewhere in between. Um, yeah, here we can see that very well for example, yeah, you see um, Sachsen and Thüringen are of course the the most highly affected and then as I said the northern states are somewhere down here. Yeah, But I think Hess and Berlin, yeah they're actually closer to the top than they are to the bottom here but they are somewhere in the middle. Okay, And this is what I'm trying to tell you. So for geographical spatial reasons uh, I didn't use that in the first wave but for the second wave Hess and Berlin are absolutely representative of Germany. And now let's look at the time dimension, that was the spatial dimension now. Now the time dimension in Germany overall, the deaths, we're looking at deaths, we're looking at mortality here now, right? Um, it, it really went up since October, but um, this th threshold of 500, let's say, per day, uh, 500 mortalities a day, uh, in these seven day moving average was, this line was crossed in the middle of December. Yeah. So if we look at the European mortality database and I want to impress this on you one more time because I always get these comments, ooh, I don't trust these PCR tests anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, but uh, we're not looking at PCR test results now. We're looking at hard, pure mortality data. That means everybody who was still alive in the previous calendar week and who is no longer alive in this calendar week 
is counted here. So no matter if he um, dies in a traffic accident or falls from a ladder while he tries to cut trees in his garden, it doesn't matter. Yeah? They all go as a count into this mortality database. And here we have graphs and maps. And um, yeah, we can see overall, this is overall numbers of the compound numbers of the contributing countries. We see the first wave was more significant yeah, in excess mortality. These are actually here, the y-axis is still um, total number of people, yeah, deaths. Yeah. Um, and here you see the second wave that we have now in Europe. Um, here in the summer you see around calendar week 30, 33. That is the summer heat wave, mind you. And these larger um, excess spikes here, these are diseases. Yeah, that's always, you can see it's around winter. Yeah, it starts in winter and it, it ends in, in spring. Yeah, always the same. And uh, this year it was different. It started in um, the spring yeah, and ended in spring <laughs> or in summer. Yeah. And um, that was a little bit different, almost no flu. Yeah. And, um, but I always like to compare it to the 2018 flu because nothing was done about this. No measures, nothing, no, no horror stories in the media. But um, the excess mortality is as high as this second or almost as high uh, as the second wave is now. First wave was of course different. And here you see it by age. So you see young people are not affected whatsoever. Only uh, people above the age of 44. Uh, starting with 45 years of age, they are somewhat affected. And then as you go on, you see uh, the older you, uh, you go in age group, the more affected people are, right? This is what we know. And, um, but it becomes interesting when we look at this map now. Huh? <clears throat> so here you can see the, the, the units now are no longer individual mm, deaths but z-score and that is kind of a measure for the significance of the excess mortality signal. That means by how many standard deviations for this area am I over the um, normal mortality corridor. So that means that the higher the z-score the more extraordinary the um, excess mortality is. So the, the, the dark blue is extraordinary high and then very high, high, moderate, low, no excess or no da data. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's go through the year 2020, I would suggest. Um, so here, as I said, almost no flu, by the way, the year 2018 looked like this. Yeah. We had very high excess, I think that is here. Yeah, in Spain, yeah. And high excess in the UK and so on, right? And um, that is still very high, yeah. Mm -hmm. No extraordinary high, okay. <laughs> anyway, so, um, and now in 2020, this is when it started somehow, um, or maybe this was a mild flu in the, very beginning of the year, I don't know. And now around calendar week or 10 to 13, this is when it really hit. Yeah? You can see Spain and um, yeah, France, the Benelux. Unfortunately, Italy is also not here, but um, in the da database, I mean, so here you have extraordinary high excess. Yeah? This is real, yeah? these are a lot of people uh, died during those calendar weeks in these countries, but you can see in Germany nothing. And this is what I talked about earlier, but I didn't say that means it's not here in Germany. It just means that those two states, which nobody ever claimed, are affected or were affected by um, the China bug. So, but as we move forward now, now it, in, you see in the UK and in Sweden, it took longer to, to go away. And then towards calendar week 30, 33, we see the summer heat wave. This is summer heat. This is not a virus. This is just heat. Okay. And then the hot summer was gone. Yeah? The spike, the temperature spike is gone and mortality goes down to normal. And now in autumn, it starts again. And we see it comes up 
Mm, you see the usual suspects in Western Europe, in Southern Europe. Um, also, Switzerland is hit hard now, and Slovenia, and Austria, which was not affected in the first wave. And by the way, in Germany also, the states are most severe affected now that were not affected at all by the first wave. And this makes logically sense, you know. It's like a forest fire and there is a lot of fuel left that is not yet burned, you know. This is when sparks fly that way, then the fire is the most severe, of course. Yeah, and uh, here, calendar week 48, now you have low excess mortality in Hess, no excess, in, no excess mortality in Berlin yet. And as you move on to calendar week 49, now you have moderate in uh, Hess and still none in Berlin. And um, yeah, that, that remains the same throughout the, yes, the rest of the year. Moderate for calendar week 50 and 51. Still moderate and no excess mortality in Hess and Berlin respectively and calendar week 42. As, sorry, 52. No excess mortality. But uh, that comes with a caveat. Um, there is this um, yellow zone here. So let's see. So the z-score here is the blue solid bar, the baseline is at zero, the, 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 the gray dotted line, then the normal range is this blue shaded area here that you only see when there is a peak because otherwise it's blocked by the line pretty much. Then there is um, this red dotted line uh, from that score on which is four I think or something, yeah four I think. That is when they talk of a substantial increase in mortality. And um, here you have then um, this uh, yellow area, which means just that there is a delay sometimes. So these are death certificates that need to be reported first to the local authorities, of course, and then to this European database. And because calendar week uh, 49 is not too long ago, 2020, yeah, and there was the new year and holidays and Christmas and whatnot, um, maybe there is some delay. And this is why I will revisit this uh, when this uh, yellow shaded area has moved on and we can see probably without any doubt that there might be delayed certificates uh, here or there. Um, okay, so as you see Austria here not affected almost at all in the first wave, now they are. Yeah? Belgium <laughs> always gets hit, even by the summer heat it seems. And um, but let's move to Germany. Yeah? So you see Finland, for example, was not affected at all by this. Yeah? France was hit, hit hard in the first wave, just as Spain, and now it is on the level of a normal flu. But here Germany, look, Hess and Berlin. In the first wave, of course, nothing. And nobody ever claimed that. So to see nothing there wouldn't be a contradiction of any sort, but the official China back numbers didn't report any serious um, level of cases from Hess and Berlin to begin with, so I wouldn't expect to see anything here. But now, now they do. Now Hess and Berlin in the second wave are an average case for Germany. They are representative of Germany as a whole. And you see in Berlin there is nothing, absolutely zero nothing. It's, it's even negative. Yeah? And that might be due to delays, but not in calendar week 47 and not in yeah in 45 you have like 0.44 come on that's nothing yeah and um, in Hess Hess is affected a little bit but it is around this threshold of substantial increase so it's not even significant yet and um, well but um, again it is still in the shaded area yeah but let's look at 2018 the flu they had values up to nine, z-scores of up to nine, and now they only have around five. So, uh, and this is representative for Germany as a whole, as I argued before. I hope you're convinced by that, um, but this is my position right now. And unless Germany contributes data to this database as a whole, or if they will publish German-wide numbers. And by the way, I think I remember correctly uh, when I say that um, the overall German uh, excess mortality curve was published, and I published this several times in my videos on my channel, um, where you saw that the first, um, the first wave was 
nothing basically and um, that the flu in 2018 was much worse and they published that I think in early autumn or something when the first wave was long over and this is data here that that, that, that is available one or two weeks after yeah after that calendar week so the euro momo is a very fast database there is one or two weeks delay and then you have the mortality data right away yeah as i said here we can see for example spain hit very hard in the first wave and now it's on the order of the flu 2018 yeah so and the big question is now are all these measures that we're seeing, you know, locking people up in their homes, you know, according to some incidence level, some, some weird numbers that now actually do depend on PCR test results, mind you. Um, if we're taking all these measures, crashing our economy, um, taking away people's um, chance to earn a living and stuff like that, destroying people's lives in the process, is this really justified by what we see here in the mortality data? Or is it just that this is uh, business as usual for Europe? In winter, we do have infectious diseases every year almost, and this is normal. And people who are sick and frail and weak and old, yeah, guess what? In winter, you know, they tend to die, some of them at least, right? And um, that is very normal. And um, my feeling is, or my impression is, that the media and the politicians, the powers that be, they have jazzed up this this year's um, yeah viral infection to um, a yeah scary pandemic or whatever they want to call it, uh, when in fact it is not more dangerous than any other uh, disease from any other winter almost that we've seen before. And uh, if you argue a different case uh, be my guest but please use the official numbers please um, make your point based on official mortality numbers just as i did and convince me uh, why in germany this year that would be so much worse yeah in spain i would agree yes spain in, in, in for whatever reason yeah that was really severe uh, not now but in spring but spring is over now it's not severe anymore, even there, right? So once again, look at Germany. Oops, where was it? Here, yeah. Nothing going on. Nothing out of the usual. Nothing out of the ordinary. Business as usual. Okay. So I will revisit that topic when n new data comes in or when this doubtful delay corridor here has moved on. Until then, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Servus, Kameraden.